Hello to you all. Uh, it feels uh, a bit uh, strange to be speaking to you in such a way under this lockdown, not being able to speak to you all in person. But uh, I hope that you're all doing well under the lockdown, that uh, you've all made sure that you've got a good supply of food, haven't panicked, buy, bought and all that kind of stuff, emptied our supermarket shelves, but uh, I've got everything you need so that you can stay safe at home under this lockdown. Last time actually that uh, I... Uh, I did a recording like this where I had to record uh, a, a message via a video file was uh, when I was uh, back in the UK. Uh, it was about, I think it was about five going on six years ago now when I was uh, having to deal with um, my visa, having to renew my visa. I was stuck in the UK, not able to get back to South Africa. For me, it felt like a really desperate time. For our family, it felt like a really desperate time. I didn't know if I was ever going to be able to get back at one stage. But uh, God did turn things around for me and uh, uh, he made a way, he can do the impossible, eh? our God, and he made a way for me to uh, get back to South Africa. Our God can do the impossible, even when things feel like they're or seem like they're stacked up against him. I want to take a moment to just share a short message with you, just a few short thoughts. I'm trying to keep the file as small as possible so that it's easily uploaded and easily downloaded on your side. Before the lockdown started, I was out walking my dog, going out on one of my walks as I do, and I was thinking about uh, Egypt and the plagues uh, that uh, they experienced while in Israel was living in the nation of Egypt. It must have been something. It must have been really scary for both Egypt and for Israel. Up front, I just want to say that. Uh, the picture today clearly isn't the same as what was experienced in those times. The coronavirus isn't something that was sent from God. It isn't something that has been sent from God. I don't believe it's been sent from God as the plagues were. Also, uh, in, in the plagues, the people of Israel, God's people, uh, weren't affected by the plagues. And, and we know that uh, Christians today can also be infected by the coronavirus. Anyway, getting back to Egypt, fear must have gripped all of Egypt, all the inhabitants, all the people that lived in Egypt. And it would have been something that was also felt by God's people. God's people living, I think they were living in the land, uh, in a place called Goshen at the time. They must have felt pretty locked down in, in Egypt as all this horrible stuff unfolded around them. Corona for us today is all around us, both nationally and internationally. And, and as we know, we're in a state of lockdown and we're experiencing some of the harshest days that we've ever experienced. But we need to remember that we are not alone in this. As God's people, we are not alone in this. God is with us at every, at every part of our lives. God is with us always. He is with us and he also goes before us. I believe that at the heart of this coronavirus is evil itself. But we must remember that evil has been defeated and the coronavirus will be defeated. These dark days that uh, the world is living in will come to an end. As people of faith, as people who have received Jesus into their lives, together we must wait on God for such great days to come, for an end to what we're experiencing at this time, for that day to come. We must wait on our God with an expectant heart. As we do daily, we must turn to our God in prayer. And, and I believe we're all praying. And I think in some ways, probably our, our, our prayer life has experienced something of a revival, a renewal. I'm sure we're praying more today than we've ever prayed before. As we pray for ourselves, as we pray for our loved ones, as we pray for our friends, etc. We're praying that the coronavirus will pass us by. But not just passers by, we're praying that the coronavirus will come to an end. And all of this reminds me again of, of Israel. It reminds me of the Passover that they experienced for the first time as they lived out their days in Egypt. Our prayers, in some ways, are similar to the blood that they put on the doorposts so that the last, the last plague, that plague of death, would pass them by. Guys, keep on praying. Keep on seeking after our gods. Keep on trusting that trusting in our God. Psalm 18 verse 6 says, In my distress I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple he heard my 
voice from his temple. He heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. God hears our prayers. He hears our prayers and he is acting on those prayers. Hold firm to that truth by faith. The last part of James chapter 5 verse 16 says, and I shared this last week when we met for church together. The verse says, the last part of the verse says, the prayer of a righteous person is very powerful in its effect. That power is from our God. It's a power that is active and it's a power that will be witnessed by all. Egypt's, pl Egypt's plagues did come to an end. It was a, a great day for all of God's people. It was an end to their bondage. It was a new beginning for them all. The plague that is the coronavirus is also going to come to an end. It will be a great day for all people, not just God's people, but all people. I believe it will herald a great awakening, a great spiritual awakening where many people will turn to Jesus. It will begin, it'll, it'll be a new beginning for all people. There will be a new sense of the value of life, a new sense of community and a renewed desire for God and for his church. This, I believe, will be both for believers and for those not yet saved. History shows us that events of this scale change the world. Thinking of things like the World Wars and the Second World, for, world War in particular, how the world was changed after that war. Let's look forward to a new and even better world coming as this season comes to a close. On that note, I want to conclude my thoughts and share some final words. These are indeed perilous times that we're living in, but I encourage you to stand firm on the rock that is our God. Continue to live under the protection of the Most High, dwelling in the shadow of the Almighty. Psalm 91 verse, verse 1. Let the perfect peace of God fill your thoughts and your life. Let me quote Isaiah 26, verse 3 to you. You, God, will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. What an incredible verse that is to hold on to. Guys, as I close, let me say, stay safe. Stay safe. Listen to the instructions that we're being given by our government. Stay safe. Stay in contact with each other. And let's see this thing through. I love you all and I'm looking forward to the time when we can gather again and praise our great gods when we can meet again in my home as the beautiful church that is New Horizon Vineyard. I love you guys. Let me close in prayer. Father God, I just want to say thank you for each and every person that is connected to New Horizon Vineyard, each and every person that makes up the family that is our church, Lord God. I thank you that we all know you as our Lord and Saviour. I thank you, Lord God, that you are with us and that you go before us. Lord, hear our prayers as we cry for an end to this virus. Hear our prayers for ourselves, for our families and for our world, Lord God. And Lord, I pray and ask that you bring us together again soon. Together again soon in a safe place, in a safe world where we can all seek your face once again as we, as we collectively gather as your church. Bless your people, Lord God. Thank you for them all. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.